Today we'll talk about Capsicum, the newest unboxing technology that's uh, shipped with uh, FreeBZ9, and um, I find it very interesting. Yeah. So we will begin with uh, so uh, the plan of our talk. Not so big, uh, and uh, let's begin. So back to the uh, good old times, or the um, not sure that's good old times. Okay. But it was so. Uh, our operating systems were for single user. Uh, that means one computer is one user, and uh, a few of them maybe were connected to the internet, but most of them were not. And uh, security was not a problem. Uh, nowadays, uh, things got different, and now we have multi user systems. And uh, these systems protect uh, data from one user from another user. That means uh, if I work on the same machine as another user, I, couldn't, I can't get access to his data. But the problem is that uh, those systems don't protect users' data from other applications that uh, this user runs. Mm, that may sound quite paranoid, and why uh, should I do that? So I'm a user and I, I know what I do, and so on. But yeah, modern applications uh, are very complex and sometimes uh, not written in security in mind. Uh, yeah, for example, Firefox. Uh, you can search Google uh, how many CVEs uh, there were um, last time in past few months for Firefox. And uh, even well-written applications uh, may depend on libraries that are not well-written. Yeah, such example, I think everyone, everyone knows this. Um, and uh, what's bad is uh, one application is um, breaked, is broken, uh, the attacker can, has access to the uh, all user data uh, including sensitive information. For example, if your browser um, is not written properly, an attacker can use a buffer overflow attack and uh, run a shell and then do anything he wants. Uh, okay, uh, some one of you may say, okay, let's put our process in change root environment and that's it. Because, okay, that's a security technology that's available for a long time. But the problem is that uh, treating alone doesn't do something useful. Because it doesn't prevent processes for opening net network sockets, for example. Uh, or it's still possible to send signals to the uh, process that it's outside of uh, your ch chain road. So effectively it's uh, not so cool. And what's even worse is that uh, root system call required root. Uh, that means that if you want to employ change root, you must write set root helper, for example, or the, you should try, uh, sh you should run your application as root. It's not so cool. So that's Capsicum. What's Capsicum? Uh, essentially, it's a lightweight operating system uh, capability and sandbox framework. Uh, that's included in FreeBSD 9 in generic kernel, uh, but I think it's switched off in gener generic and will be switched on in FreeBSD 9.1. Uh, it's being ported to uh, OpenBSD and Linux. And uh, essentially it provides a few new kernel uh, objects, uh, sandbox capability mode and capabilities, and some kind of uh, user space API. Uh, what's important to understand is that uh, access restri uh, restrictions are requested by application itself and then enforced by the OS kernel. That, me uh, that means that uh, using Capsicum requires modifications, certain modifications of the user co uh, application code. And uh, what's also good is that uh, this framework extends rather than replaces traditional po POSIX objects. That means that you should not rewrite your application from scratch. 
well, uh, using some kind of new objects. You will continue to work with file descriptors and socket descriptors. That's fine. Um, just little modifications needed. So that's the idea. Uh, so if you have one big application that does many things, it may be split into smaller ones. Uh, where different parts run different things, do different things, and communicate with each other via certain kind of IPC channel. And uh, what's important is that applications should not have access to more resources that they need for their normal operation. Uh, that means that several, uh, this logical application each logical application may have access to the very restricted set of the uh, system resources. That's how it looks like. Uh, I think uh, many of you uh, already know what I'm talking about, what browser. Uh, for those who still don't know, I will show. Here on this machine I run Google Chrome and if we uh, try to understand how many Chromium processes are actually running here. Quite a few. <laughs> yeah, basically for each open tab, uh, a separate process is run. So I don't have many tabs here, but Mm, yeah, but many, many processes that, uh, that, are, that are here to uh, enforce some restrictions. Because in Chromium, each, par each process does its own thing. Yeah, I got lost. And just fine. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some examples of uh, applications include um, those written here, and uh, we may classify them uh, by several classes here. Uh, first, there are applications that uh, almost don't require any modifications, or many, uh, or quite a, okay, a one, two source code modifications, and not more, to be ready to work with Cap Capsicum. Such applications, for example, is uh, BS patch, that is uh, binary patch utility from the uh, FreeBSD base system, and BS diff, it's counterpart, and TCP dump. Uh, TCP dump uh, sandboxing was done by Robert Watson, uh, I think two years ago, while writing his first Capsicum prototype. With uh, BS patch, it was done by me about three weeks ago. Uh, then, somewhat more complicated, it's, uh, for example, fetch utility from the uh, FreeBSD base system, and bzip2. Bzip2 is interesting uh, because uh, Ben Lowry, another senior researcher who is working on Capsicum now, uh, has taken this application as, a, as an example how to make um, a sandboxing actually work in applications that are not so easy to modify. And uh, there are also some complex examples, such as uh, syslogd, that's a critical system service that runs as root. Uh, okay, in FreeBSD it runs as root. I, I know that in OpenBSD things are a bit, a bit different. Uh, yeah, it runs as root. It has uh, an access to the network sockets and, and uh, to quite a few files. And uh, that's why I decided to uh, make some work to sandbox it. Yeah, let's wait. Okay. Um, uh, what's wrong actually with the BS patch, for example? It seems like a not so, not so complex application, uh, but BS patch, binary patching, uh, involves uh, compressing and decompressing uh, of uh, certain amounts of data that is done by code that may be possibly insecure. 
because okay, compression and decompression is not an easy thing, and it's uh, not so easy to dump properly. Uh, but in this example, only a few modifications were necessary. I will show uh, those GitHub links. Not so really. Oh, crap. Okay. I will do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, that was the first change. Um, here are the um, op open routines, open, uh, open calls. Uh, earlier they were somewhere in the middle of, a, of an application. That means uh, BS patch has opened files only when it needed this, uh, on demand. And what I have done, is moving those open calls here, writing in the beginning. And the second is actually adding capability mode. That's it. What do we see here? First, we try to understand if the capability mode is available on the system, because FreeBSD kernel is uh, very uh, flexible, and a uh, user can select not to compile some features in. That means uh, uh, the capability mode may not be available at all. That mean, uh, that's why we first check if this feature is available, and if it is, then we uh, try to limit operations, possible file operations on the uh, already open file descriptors. Uh, in this case, uh, almost for all files, we need only uh, read, read, readability, and move the file pointer forward or backward. That means cap seek and cap read. And for output file descriptor, we need cap write and cap seek. That's all. Uh, so we call cap limit fd. That's a new system call. And then we call cap enter. That's a the central point. Uh, after the cup enter is called, no further opens are available. That means you couldn't, cannot open file descriptors. You cannot open network sockets. You cannot fork. You cannot exec. So, um, that means if uh, an attacker breaks into the application that's already sandboxed, there are not so many things, actually, that he could do in this case. What's wrong with fetch? Uh, the problem is that uh, fetch could also be used to um, fetch files from the remote hosts. Uh, possibly using SSL, and yeah, SSL also involves some complex processing, encryption, decryption, and also compression, and which is not so not so secure. Uh, what I have done? Oh, what's that? Okay. Uh, after all files uh, and network sockets were opened. Uh, we can make fork, and the child process will uh, sandbox itself and continue to fetch uh, from the network, compress and decompress, right to the local disk, and that's all. And the parent will stay on the terminal and wait for user input. What's, um, what's different with fetch is that uh, fetch uses, uh, uh, shows file download progress, you know how many percents are actually done, how, how many time is left. And uh, if chi the child has uh, the task of downloading file, then the child has this information, and the parent does not. And uh, that's why uh, we have to implement some kind of IPC, that, that means inter-process communication, to pass this, inform this information from child to parent. 
uh, yeah, this involved uh, some light modifications of uh, libfetch to always apply file descriptors to the uh, color. So let's get to Chromium. Chromium is uh, actually a very good piece of software. I use it and I advise you to use it also. Uh, what's good with Chromium is that it already uses certain sandboxing technologies that are available on some different platforms that it run runs on. So that means uh, certain kind of sandboxing is implemented on Windows, on Linux, and on Mac OS, and now on FreeBSD. That's um, such kind of comparison um, of different sandboxing methods used. First, Windows. Uh, on Windows, Chromium uses uh, discretionary access control and mandatory access control, combined with um, user set, uh, user identifiers, and so on and so far. Those methods were designed to protect data from one user from another user, and therefore it's not so effective for sandboxing. You know, uh, look at the lines of code column. Windows unboxing, it's 22,000 of lines. And it's still rather ineffective. So Windows, yeah, it's Windows. Then Linux. Uh, actually, on Linux, several sandboxing uh, technologies are used. First is uh, change root. As we talked already, uh, it's not so effective technology at all. Because uh, it requires set UID helper to create change root environment and um, it doesn't protect it from sending signals uh, or for example making shutdown and opening network sockets. Uh, on Mac OS X there is a seat belt uh, technology available. Uh, it's more effective, uh, but still have some drawbacks. I will explain here in detail uh, the, all the drawbacks of uh, certain sandboxing technologies. Uh, if you are interested, I suggest reading an excellent paper by Robert Watson for this, where he explained in detail uh, the drawbacks and the other interesting points. Yeah. Um, I have recently heard about SecComp filters and SecComp technology in Linux. Uh, for example, the recent version of a uh, very secured FTP daemon uh, uses SecComp filters, uh, sandboxing, and uh, the new OpenSSL release uses it as well. I think uh, SecComp filters are somewhat different from SecComp. And I hope so, because uh, SecComp, uh, implementing SecComp sandboxing in Chromium required 11,000 lines of code. Uh, and this code is not a walk in the park. It's critical and uh, handcrafted assembly code uh, required to pass file descriptors from one application to another and to marshal syscalls. Compared to this, FreeBSD Capsicum implementation took only 100 lines to achieve the best sandboxing for the Chromium browser. Uh, using this, each of the processes, each of the render processes is uh, put into its own sandbox. It's not possible to infer with another render processes or with um, the UE process user interface process. For example, on SE Linux, uh, the, I think the most widespread technology of sandboxing on Linux, all the renderer processes of Chromium are put in the same sandbox. So, for example, if an attacker breaks into the render process, he's still able to access data that's uh, stored in uh, another part of the render process, where, for example, your banking data may be. Not so cool. Mm. 
Yeah, that's uh, what I have said. What's the cost of the security? So first of all, uh, those applications that are designed in the, with the security in mind already accept certain kind of performance drop. Because you cannot just open the file. You have to think where to open it. If necessary, you have to split your application and use IPC message parsing to pass file descriptors from one application to another one. And yeah, that's a certain performance cost. Uh, but of course, it depends on the nature of the application. For example, if you take some application that receives two files and it should compress one file into the, another one, with Capsicum, it's quite, it's quite simple because at the beginning you open the files, then you enter sandboxing mode, and then you run your compression code. No performance drop at all, apart from five nanoseconds in the beginning that's required to open sandbox. In general, yeah, um, using sandbo uh, Capsicum sandboxing offers uh, near native Unix performance. And uh, there are certain kind of uh, good tools. For example, open ad system call. That helps you to reduce the amount of IPC required for operation. Open ad, uh, for those who don't, doesn't know it, uh, for open ad, you supply the file descriptor or the open file descriptor of the directory. And then the path within the, this hierarchy. That means uh, you can open new files using just one file descriptor. You don't need to op pass any file descriptors from another part of the application. So that's cool, but what's the current status? Uh, Capsicum was shipped in the FreeBSD 9 as an experimental feature. Experimental means that uh, it's not turned on by default in the generic kernel. But it's quite easy to recompile using two extra options to receive the full Capsicum power. Uh, in the upcoming FreeBSD 1.9, uh, sorry, uh, those features will be turned on. And uh, apart from that, uh, some applications in the base system will be shipped with uh, Capsicum support. As I, I have described, most likely it will be uh, BSIP, base patch, base fetch, maybe fetch, uh, base patch and BSD, so on and so on. Yeah, with OpenBSD, uh, the development is somewhat suspended, but maybe continued in the meantime. Uh, I should say that uh, in our company in Genoa, Deutschland, Deutschland uh, we are quite interested in that because we use OpenBSD uh, for our projects and we are interested in uh, such security technologies. From NetBSD, I don't know. So I have seen some flood on the mailing list. I think it was current tech or somewhat. But as far as I know, they uh, didn't develop anything for that. Regarding Linux and Chrome OS, uh, there is a port in progress. And uh, there are, I think, two people who are working at Google and uh, also do Capsicum. That's Ben Lowry and uh, some of the guy, I don't remember the name. So maybe we will see uh, some functioning port of sandboxing, uh, Capsicum sandboxing in Linux also. So, if it's, well, it was interesting for you and you want to try this sexy technology, there are, that's easy, you know. Uh, there, is, there are some excellent resources devoted to Capsicum. First of all, it's a Capsicum pro project page. Then uh, it's a Capsicum mailing list. And uh, there are several developers on GitHub and a lot of development in, is happening there in the past days. And yeah, it's also possible to install FreeBSD 9 and recompile the kernel and start hacking. 
and mail force will be here. So, here are some useful links that may be used when you, if you download my slides, and that's possible to click and follow and see what's happening.